Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Portiverse Workbench. This is a good one, I'd say. But we have a new member of the Gooper Army. Here is Gooper James. Now, if I'm being totally honest, this model was not planned at all, really. You see, I was out and about one day searching for a push along Henry so I can make his Gooper variant. Sadly, Henry was not in there. But they did have a James and a Young battle, which I did buy that day. And here we are now. So before we get into how to build the model, let's dive into the Portiverse backstory of Goober James. Here we go. Like most of the Goobers, it all begins with an unnamed railroad in the late 90s. Dale Thomas was in its prime. And this one unnamed railroad in particular was aiming to cash in on the brand. And so they thus built a lot of dummy units with their Thomas license. They even thrived these for a little bit as well. They built a handful of engines. Ranging from Thomas all the way to even Toby. But all didn't last good for that long as Event Rail was eventually shut down in 2002. And the units were thus sold off or just abandoned. The Gordon, Henry, and James units were sold to a theme park. While the other units went elsewhere. At this unnamed theme park in question, Gordon and Henry were motorized and became trains that just haul excursions around the park. While James's unit in particular was turned into a, like, a beach display in a boat dark ride similar to It's a Small World at Disney Parks. The theme park eventually closed around 2012 and by 2013 the James unit was removed from the park and subsequently abandoned in a railroad storage site. And eventually Thomas, on one of his many US tours, will come across it around 2015. It is unclear if this unit survives today, but many say it has been presumed to be scrapped. The trail goes cold. Making this Gooper James model was fairly easy to make, I'd say. Like all the other goobers, he was made from an all engine scope push along toy that was heavily modified to fit onto this random chassis I had. After the disassembly, I dunked the metal boiler into acetone overnight. I would then scrub it off the paint with a metal wire brush. After the paint was all removed, I then primed the body and the other parts in a white primer. And while the primer was drying, I worked on the chassis. This chassis you see in this model was actually once the chassis of my original Puffa model. I completely gutted the entire model except for the wheels and then modified the toy running board to, to fit, making sure it fit just right and then I painted it. I then painted the boiler red and made sure to keep the splashers and firebox clean from the red paint so that the secondary color will go on just fine. And the secondary color was a turquoise. I was going for a bit of a beach theme here as I was painting and I wanted to keep the, the color palette very vibrant. The cab next was painted purple to match the other big engine goobers. The running board was painted all yellow, and the above was painted black. And after all of that cosmetic work, I glued the body down to the chassis. And then after the chassis was glued to the body, I gave the entire model a final matte clear coating. Just make sure the paint is sealed in and really unifies it all together. And just like that, Goober James was complete. And gotta say, he really fits in with the others. It's pretty cool. Goober Army is always growing. Speaking of the Goobers in general, there are going to be more Goober models. I'm actually currently working on Henry. I know I've been teasing out for a while now. I've finally managed to get my hands on one. It's taking way longer than I hoped for, but hey, we're here now. And also, a push along Edward was also leaked pretty recently. Not sure when he will be released though, but rest assured that when I'm able to get my hands on him, I will add him to the ever-growing Goober Army. Thank you all very much for watching this episode of the Portiverse Workbench. And I shall see you all in the next one.